I mean, you, you see already that the concept of the paper, the scientific paper, is eroding before our very eyes. There used to be a, an object that had an introduction and results and an experimental section, and you'd look at the experimental section, and this was full of really important detail. And up front, there was this little thing called an abstract, and that was almost incidental. Papers now are, in a sense, extended abstracts, and everything else is somewhere else. You know, the entire rest of the paper has been put in what we used to call supplemental, but now with everything electronic, it's not quite clear where the useful information is. But I think the, and that, let me say, I think this is all to the good, because if you have to read a very complex set of words, many pages of stuff in order to figure out what's going on, then you're not likely to do it. There are just too many of these things around to make, make it worth the effort. So to the extent that we can find ways of taking scientific results, abstracting from them the thing that is most important, and then making that clear with all the rest being supporting detail, terrific. But there are some changes that I think are bigger changes along the way. I don't know how people are going to read when they're, as we have presently evolved, when there is no paper. You know, PNAS and Science and Nature still are paper-based journals, and I happen to like paper, but many of the ACS journals don't exist in paper form. And I think the interaction between the author, the journal on a screen, and paper is just going to be fundamentally different. But even more interesting and serious are, are things like, well, video. And I increasingly find that the stuff that we do that has probably the greatest impact in some metrics is done in, in video format, not in paper format. So, for example, I've done a couple of TED or TED-like talks in the last period of time on subjects that we do our research in. Paper diagnostics and simplicity were the two that were interesting. And if you look at the number of downloads of those, either from the TED site or on YouTube, they're much larger than the number of citations than we would ever see in scientific journals. And that means that there are just lots more people looking at the videos than would ever read the paper. Now, it's a different audience, different purpose, different set of circumstances. But one of the troubles with universities is that there is a tendency to do terrific research embed it in prose that is impenetrable even to experts, bury it in papers, and have, to everyone's surprise, nothing come out of it. And that's not necessarily a good outcome. So one of the things I'm increasingly trying to do is to teach the students how to do, how, how to tell stories, for one thing. Not to report science, but how to tell a story about what they're doing, and then how to do it in our usual format in the group is three minutes. So they have to summarize whatever they're working on, the results, the objectives, what you're doing, why it's interesting, where you've gotten, and who cares in three minutes. And obviously you leave out a certain amount of scientific detail that way. But it may well be that what we have in the future is some combination of very short snips in one or another kind of extended abstract leading to through links, through something else, more and more levels of detail. And that may be a good thing. It's going to be very, very different, though. I think that there's probably less time spent on reading articles for two reasons. One is there are many more articles. And the second thing is that there are many more things to do with the day. So there's just less time to do stuff. And I think that my argument would be that to the extent that you can take what's interesting in an article, which is typically distinct from all of the details, and put that up front, um, it helps everybody. So if there's something that's, uh, call it what you like, a, a short form, an extended abstract, or something that really gets the idea across quickly, people can scan that. 
And if it catches their attention, then they can go and read more detail. And if it's really important to them, then they read the experimental stuff and perhaps even think about adopting ideas from it and doing something with it. But the idea of layering the information and thinking about the reader and asking, or viewer, asking what is it that the person needs to know to decide whether this is interesting? What is it the person needs to know to decide whether it's real and actually believable? And then what would it be that they would need to know to do some of it? Those are actually different layers of detail. And as we write a scientific paper right now, we tend to put it all in the same thing. And it probably would make sense to begin to pull these pieces apart.